I am Rajesh Kutti and you have just started watching the weekly edition of Bite the Bullet. Let's start. The WHO has declared the coronavirus disease as a pandemic. But are we as Indian citizens really bothered or worried about it? Can you imagine that we are well on our way to becoming the world's largest repository of COVID-19 patients? That's not something to be proud of. Somewhere deep inside us, we are still afraid to accept this glaring fact that this virus can infect us and has the potential to kill us or at least it has the capacity to damage our lives forever. Hum to mar kar bach jayenge, lekin hum humare peechhe apne besahara aur broken families ko chhod jayenge. This pandemic is raging across the world and bringing down to its knees entire societies, communities, countries and economies. Hence, please understand firstly that this is a threat and secondly, this threat is very, very real. First, we must clearly understand certain facts about the COVID-19 pandemic caused by the coronavirus. Coronaviruses are a large family of viruses that are actually common throughout the world. They cause respiratory illnesses in people and animals. There are several well-known coronaviruses that infect people and they usually cause a mild respiratory disease such as the common cold. However, at least two previously identified coronaviruses have caused severe illnesses, killed a large number of people around the world like the SARS coronavirus and the MERS coronavirus. But what is different about this coronavirus, COVID-19, is that while coronaviruses are common, the COVID-19 virus is a new strain of virus that had previously not been identified in humans. The key features of COVID-19 are respiratory symptoms with high fever and cough. Like all new infections, understanding the COVID-19 virus is the most important step and also a difficult one because the virus changes or adapts itself very rapidly. What we do know is that the COVID-19 virus spreads primarily through droplets of saliva or discharge from the nose when an infected person coughs or sneezes. COVID-19 was initially thought to cause deaths due to pneumonia, which is a lung infection. And so putting patients on ventilators was thought to be the best way to treat those patients who reported difficulty in breathing. It is now understood that the COVID-19 virus causes blood clots in the blood vessels of the lungs and other parts of the body and this creates a huge oxygen deficiency in the body. What may actually help is prevention of micro clots in the blood vessels of the lungs which is why doctors started using drugs like aspirin, heparin as a protocol in treatment regimens from June 2020. Now aspirin and heparin are actually blood thinners which when administered prevent the clotting of blood thereby preventing clotting of blood in the lungs. In the initial stages of the COVID-19 pandemic, we had seen videos of patients dropping dead on the road like in a zombie movie. Mostly those were videos from Wuhan. It was happening due to reduced oxygen levels in their blood or due to oxygen saturation. This gave rise to a condition called happy hypoxia. Even though the oxygen level was gradually reducing in the COVID-19 patients, they did not show any symptoms until the oxygen level became critically low. Normally, we become breathless if oxygen levels reduce to below 90%. It was found that such breathlessness was not triggered in a COVID-19 patient even when the oxygen level reached 70%. Hence, the infected patients could not know that their bodies were getting starved of oxygen. But now it is possible to monitor oxygen levels, saturation levels of all COVID-19 patients with a very simple instrument called a pulse oximeter. It is easy to use and easily available both online and in your nearby chemist shop. 
By using this, we can quickly come to know when the patient's oxygen level drops to below 93%. He can then be quickly admitted to the hospital, which may give more time to the doctors to correct the oxygen deficiency in the blood. And the survival chances of this patient can be increased significantly. Ab iske baad kya hua? Non-availability of drugs to fight the coronavirus led to treating the complications caused by it. This led to most patients becoming severely infected, especially the ones with low physical immunity. Lately, two important medicines, Favipiravir and Remdesivir, are being put to use now for treating the COVID-19 infected patients. It is strictly administered on a compassionate basis. It seems that by using these two medicines, patients can be prevented from becoming severely infected, thereby curing them before they reach the oxygen deficiency stage. By the way, Sipla India is coming out with a new version of the Favipiravir medicine to treat patients with mild COVID-19 symptoms. It is called Siplex and it costs somewhere close to rupees 68 per tablet. It is now said that people with hypoxia became better just by making them lie down on their belly in prone position. Recently, Israeli scientists have discovered that a chemical known as alpha defensin produced by the COVID-19 infected patient's own white blood cells can cause micro clots in blood vessels of the infected patient's lungs. This could possibly be prevented by administering a drug called colchinine, which has been in use for many decades for a treatment of acute cases of gout. Now, the doctor and scientists know that many COVID-19 patients died not just because of the virus, but also due to the patient's own immune system responding exaggeratedly to the virus attack. This phenomenon is called a cytokine storm and this hyper strong response by our immune system not only kills the virus but also ends up killing the patient. In the initial stages we didn't know how to prevent it. Now it is understood that easily available medicines called steroids that doctors around the world have been using for the last maybe 80 or 100 years can be used to prevent the cytokine storm in some patients. Now we know that if we have corona, ho gaya, even after we have taken all precautions, then what actions we should take to overcome such a situation? First and foremost, keep calm. Don't panic. It may start by the onset of cough and then there may be pain in the thighs and calf muscles. Body temperatures may increase just like any other viral fever. Immediately you should quarantine yourself to prevent endangering your immediate family members. Get yourself room quarantined inside your own home. Have your own plate, glass, spoon, flask and your phone with a charger. Keep yourself strictly confined to this room. Next, inform the local health authorities and at the earliest and request them to test you for COVID-19 virus infection. By now, if you have actually contacted the virus, fever may start. Usually people take medicines like Dolo 650 or a paracetamol tablet and go to sleep. The next morning try to arrange for a thermometer and an oximeter. Initially for a COVID-19 positive patient, the body temperature is in the range of 99 and 100. The oxygen levels of a COVID positive patient may drop. But usually for less severe cases, it stays at 95 or 96. Sips of hot water with dried ginger and lime is very helpful. If you have heavy coughing, then you can take honey with onion juice and if cough is accompanied by phlegm, then frequently take honey mixed with black pepper and turmeric. You can also consume chewable ginger pieces with salt and undertake frequent steam inhalation. If you have throat pain, then gargle regularly with salt water. If you are corona positive, then on the 6th or 7th day, you may lose your sense of smell or taste. 
don't worry you will get it back after some days keep walking and doing small exercises inside your own room do not step outside instruct your family members to stay away from you and to follow strict personal hygiene after 18 or 20 days you will be perfectly fine and your family members also would not have contacted this disease if you and they had strictly followed room quarantine procedures you will have to be tested twice again for COVID-19 infection and if both tests are negative then you are considered cured and free from this virus. Do you know that presently more than 150 different drugs are being researched in different countries for treating the COVID-19 infection? The United Kingdom is running the world's largest clinical trial called Recovery with more than 12,000 patients taking part in it. The World Health Organization is running the Solidarity Trial to assess promising treatments in countries around the world. Multiple pharmaceutical companies are running trials of their own drugs. A significant breakthrough in the fight against coronavirus is the usage of a steroid named dexamethasone which calms down inflammation in the body and cuts the risk of death by a third for patients on ventilators and by a fifth for those on oxygen. Vaccines give broad parts of the population some level of immunity and are considered crucial to ending the pandemic. They also take longer to develop because they must be proven to be extremely safe since they are given to healthy people. The global rush to develop Corona vaccines is accelerating with the Russians clearing the world's first vaccine for widespread use even before completing late stage clinical trials. Companies like AstraZeneca, Moderna, Pfizer and BioNTech are among the front runners in developing this vaccine. Johnson & Johnson is working on an adenovirus based vaccine and the company plans to move into phase 3 trials by end September. China's CanSino Biologics has received authorization for limited deployment of its vaccine among the Chinese military personnel. In India, the Drugs Controller General of India, the DGCI, has allowed Sun Pharmaceuticals to conduct clinical trials for the first botanical or phytopharmaceutical or plant-based drug AQCH to treat COVID-19 patients. Extracts from a plant named Cocculus erastus, also called as Patal Garudi, is being used in the new drug that is being developed by Sun Pharma and the early results indicate that it has begun to successfully mitigate the COVID-19 infection. India's first potential COVID-19 vaccine named Covaxin, developed by Bharat Biotech Limited, has been granted approval from the Drugs Controller General of India and the human clinical trials have started across the country. Bharat Biotech created Covaxin in collaboration with the Indian Council of Medical Research and the National Institute of Virology. The vaccine is expected to hit Indian markets by Jan 2021. Zydus Cadilla is the second company to secure regulatory approval from the Drugs Controller General of India to conduct the phase 2 human trials of its COVID-19 vaccine named Zycovid D. Zydus Cadilla developed this COVID-19 vaccine at its vaccine technology center in Ahmedabad. Notwithstanding the Indian vaccine scenario, we are on course to have an approved vaccine by 2021. And the Pune-based Serum Institute of India, the world's largest vaccine manufacturer by volume, is well placed to deliver the first commercially viable vaccine. Globally, there are about four companies who are close to getting an approval and through partnerships, India has access to two of them. They are Oxford's Viral Vector Vaccine and Novavax's Protein Subunit Vaccine. So in the global capacity equation for production of vaccines, there are no foreseeable manufacturing scale-up challenges for India because the Serum Institute of India has the capacity to supply 600 million doses in 2021 
and 1 billion doses in 2022 out of which 400 to 500 million should be available in India by 2021. Now everybody is asking can a COVID-19 survivor's blood treat coronavirus? The answer is yes. Blood plasma is that part of the blood which contains the antibodies and it can be extracted from those who have recovered and then given to sick patients as convalescent plasma. This therapy is now being tested in various states of India and in many other countries of the world. If you are a COVID-19 survivor, you must definitely donate your plasma. You might just help a dying corona patient get his life back. You may never ever get the opportunity again in your life to play God. We may never get a cure for coronavirus because it is just like any other flu or the common cold. There is no cure for the flu or the common cold. But there are treatments and medicines available for treating them. Coronavirus infection will also become like that. Secondly, having an effective treatment would in a sense make coronavirus a milder disease. If it stopped people who were admitted to hospital from needing ventilation, then there would be less risk of intensive care units being overwhelmed, so controls on people's lives would not need to be as strict as it is today. Notwithstanding the above, the easiest way to avoid getting infected by this virus is by scrupulously following some simple precautions which has been mentioned time and again like maintaining six feet distance from other people, wearing proper masks in public, avoiding unnecessary travel, working from home and by following strict hand wash and personal hygiene methods. There is one bright side to the coronavirus outbreak too. Scientists estimate that since all people are wearing masks to combat the spread of COVID-19 virus, it may end up eliminating TB by 2025. There's a greater chance of survival for those getting infected three months later, like in October 2020, than those who got infected three months earlier, say in June 2020. The reason for this is that the doctors and scientists know more about COVID-19 now than they knew three months ago, therefore enabling them to treat patients better. It is important to understand here that the later we get this infection, the greater are our chances of successfully overcoming it. That's it for now. Good luck. Be healthy. Jai Bharat.